So some of you may recall the the three and a half videos I made last year. One of them was about the King Kong Pro 2, which is arguably the very first anti-stick drift pro controller. Well, it, it wasn't really what I would consider to be a pro controller. The Pro 2 had a list of features that was longer than the list of Disney movies that had been released in the last 35 minutes. The most important of those features were Gullah Kit's homemade Hall Effect thumbsticks, but unfortunately, extra buttons or paddles were not included. And even though the King Kong Pro 2 didn't have many complaints, that was one of them. To fill this gap, 8BitDo simply asked if they could use Gullah Kit steroids, to which they said, Sure. So now we have the 8BitDo Ultimate Bluetooth, which they were kind enough to send out for this review. The beauty about my videos is, I'm never getting paid for them, so I basically get to say whatever I want. Oh yeah, by the way, did I also mention this controller that is immune to stick drift? It's just as expensive as that one fat ass controller I fix it made that, uh, that one video on. Even if you don't end up actually buying this device, I still think devices like this and the King Kong Pro 2 and the King Kong controllers why do they name them that? I think they're worth paying attention to because with luck, they might actually end up being the future of pro controllers. And if this is the case, then what does a $70 controller get you three to four years from now? Apito went all out for the ultimate. Not, not that ultimate, the other one. I, wait. How many of these do they make? So this one specifically is the ultimate Bluetooth. So it obviously comes with Bluetooth 5.0. It also comes with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And even though it has two times the amount of wirelessness that most controllers have, it still only weighs 248 grams. The dongle is for a 2.4 gigahertz X input connection, which is compatible with your PC and your Steam skateboard. The reason I know this is because phones nowadays truly do enjoy bypassing privacy settings. Mark, hi Mark. I know you're listening. I saw your training footage. You hit like a bitch. You see, Bluetooth 5.0 is pretty cool on this controller, but it's, um, well, actually, I wouldn't really know because I haven't been able to use it. Bluetooth 5.0 does not work on PC, and I don't know why. The avid Switch user might understand that this is a huge problem because on PC and Steam Skateboard, I'm, I'm just going to keep calling it that, you're not able to use Bluetooth, which means you can't use Switch mode, which means you can't use gyro. What did you say, nigga? Bruh. Due to this incompatibility with PC, I've actually only had experience with this controller wirelessly with the 2.4 GHz mode, and no, my phone is in no condition to do any sort of mobile gaming. Samsung phones are best left to everyday tasks, but even, even then, I, I really don't know. The silver lining here, I suppose, is that the 2.4 GHz connection is very consistent. The polling rate, both wired and wireless, is locked to around 200 Hz, which translates to around 4 milliseconds, but again, there are a billion variables with controllers, it's probably not that simple. And through my testing, the polling rate is locked, you can't really overclock it, I've tried, and I can't really find anything that's measurable. And a PSA before we move on from wireless connections. Are you as mentally deficient as me? If you are, you may have also spent 10 minutes looking at an empty box from the dongle. It's inside your dock. They even tell you this on the product page. And they tell you this because that's actually a USB port. It's almost like a USB extender. So if you have your dock plugged into your PC or I assume your Switch or your Steam Deck, the wireless 2.4 gigahertz connection can be achieved through the dock so you don't have to use two USB ports. It even lights up when it's charging. I spent three days draining the battery on this controller, by the way, so I could record this. And I like everything about the dock. I have no complaints aside, aside from the fact that it looks like shit because the 8BitDo logo is made with Times New Roman. Fuck. Times New Roman. You know what? Fuck you too. Roman just wanted to go out and have a piece of pizza, maybe go bowling, dick. So douchebag forgot to record a transition for this part of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right here and I'm simply going to move across the frame. Look at that. Did you see that? No, you didn't. So I've done quite a bit of gaming with this controller as evidenced by how filthy it is. Up until this shit right here, I was playing a lot of America the video game as well as a little bit of Mass Genocide Simulator another American game, and N-Word Dodgeball Part 2, which is... I I'm starting to see a pattern. While playing such family-friendly titles, though, I did learn a couple of things. For starters, between this controller, the Power Ray Spectra, and the Gamesir G7, which is getting a review soon, I can now definitively say that two flat, simple buttons is the best way to go. I've talked about this on the channel before, the, the simpler a button design or paddle design is, the more accessible it will be to a wide range of people. These buttons don't have any weird type of shape, they aren't all that bulky, and while they aren't necessarily clicky, 
they definitely don't feel as mushy and as shitty as something like the AVXY buttons. The button design, like I said, because of its simplicity, it's about as good as it gets, but some simpleton also de designed my feet. They're very flat. I don't like using them that much. They're not very good at being feet, so I'm... Bitch. You know, I think Gullet Kit missed the opportunity to call these Gullet Kit Super Sticks. I'm not gonna bombard you guys with a bunch of technical language about how these anti-stick drift thumbsticks work, it's gonna be white noise to 80% of you. In short, this is what 95% of controllers use for their thumbsticks. Carbon film potentiometers are very unreliable, and they can't really maintain a good level of accuracy for all that long. This is Gullet Kit Super Stick, and you won't believe this shit, but they run on magnets. They're just as cheap to produce, they're far more reliable, and they can maintain their accuracy for far longer periods of time. Obviously, the only controllers that currently use these thumbsticks are Gullet Kit's line of controllers and the 8-Bit Ultimate, but hopefully in the future, most, if not all, controllers come with some sort of magnetic thumbsticks. But until that happens, owners of these controllers can continue to flex their no dead zone option on the Brokies. If you're 33 and you're homeless, you're a dickhead. Which I can still say, because Andrew Tate hasn't been charged yet. Uh, when he is, I will stop making memes about him though. I got a couple weeks. The option to completely remove the thumbstick dead zone, as far as I know, is only available on Gullet Kit's thumbsticks. This means that 8BitDo also got that no dead zone feature in their software. It's a bit of a weird situation though. The thumbsticks are so similar that they share software features, but despite that, they don't really have identical performance. In a circularity test I conducted using the tried and true gamepad tester website, the ultimate averaged an error rate of around 9% on both sticks, which is similar to normal stock controller thumbsticks. So what's the issue? Well, this. A circularity test in this case is a test of the roundness of each thumbstick dead zone. And this test, if accurate, proves that there might be a bit of an inconsistency in the calibration of the thumbsticks between the 8-Bit Dell Ultimate and the King Kong Pro 2 that I have on hand. But since its error rate is no larger than a normal controller's thumbsticks, I will be giving it a pass. The thumbsticks in hand feel like any other average controller thumbstick, but it is worth mentioning they don't feel like the King Kong Pro 2 thumbsticks. Really nothing does, and I'm not 100% sure why. Apitdo did a really good job incorporating Gullet Kit Super Sticks into their controller though. The only thing I can really give them shit for is the fact that their thumbsticks are Xbox sized, but they're shaped like Gay Station controller thumbsticks. You cannot have Xbox sized Gay Station thumbsticks. That's gay. And, and according to the Bible here, that's actually breaking the rules. You see, the Bible clearly states, okay, whatever it says in there, I absolutely cannot say, but here's what it says in the actual Bible. I really don't think I could say that shit either. So we're just we're, we're just gonna exit out of that one real quick. Down here in the right hand corner, if you take a look see, we have the 8 Ultimate software, which is obviously available for PC, your Switch, and also the the other Switch, the one with, with the camera, the mobile device, that one. On the faceplate of the Ultimate, you may have taken notice of the three white lights, and those are for your three interchangeable profiles. These can be set up in this software to your liking. You have full custom button mapping options, including the ultra rare ability to actually disable an input. And like most software available for pro controllers, you have the ability to change your trigger dead zone to make them instant. You can change the length of the vibrators uh, from four to 12 inches, I think. They even give you full control of your thumbsticks with the previously mentioned no dead zone option, as well as custom dead zones you can set up yourself. 8 included everything we've come to expect from a modern pro controller in its software as well as a few other features. Write a comment about the macros, I fucking dare you. Every time I even half breathe the word macros, someone's always dying of cancer in the comment section. And you know what? You're gonna see that person if you go down there. Don't interact with them. I don't really use the macros for anything personally. They are pretty extensive. If you want a closer look at both the macros and the software itself, I actually will have a link in the description for that. As always, I don't really go too in depth with it, but the macros are really only there in my eyes for people who want to avoid doing tedious tasks and stupid ass games. You know, the ultimate has a lot going on. Like it's an absolute steal, a especially at 70 bucks. That's the same price as a wimpy ass DualSense controller and it doesn't have software that's this extensive. But controllers, basically compared to any other piece of tech, are by far the most human because they're the most flawed. And while there aren't too many issues with the 8 Ultimate, I, I always do have to give the most comprehensive review I can. So here's me doing a little bit more bitching for like four minutes.
Welcome to the only advantage of my absolutely garbage ass upload schedule. It's the fact that I get a crazy amount of time with these devices before these videos go up. So far, I have logged between 100, maybe even 120-ish hours on the 8 Do Ultimate here. The big problem is that the Ultimate's relatively new. It doesn't really have that much time to breathe, so I probably will have to revisit this at some point in the future if it does actually have some sort of reliability issue but I was still able to grab a couple of notes. In the time I've had this controller, I've only had to charge it three times so far, and this is not going to make sense in a second. The measly battery is only 1000 milliamp hours, but it claims it can hold a charge for up to 22 hours. Or can it? The lack of power the controller has when the battery gets critically low causes a couple of input issues. For example, you may get stick drift or a double clicking button and you really shouldn't panic. Don't throw the controller out. Don't try to get a warranty claim. Try to charge it up first, then do that shit. If it's still broken, you can just spike it into the ground. This is more so just a small warning though. Critical battery causes stick drift. If you're looking for real issues, the one you'll see most people complaining about is unfortunately ergonomics. People talk about the Fox Body Mustang design this controller has, causing some type of wrist or hand fatigue over time. Even I myself ended up having issues, and this was mainly due to not just the square design of the controller, but the extremely tight tension of the triggers. Oh yeah, one or two people talked about how like, the controller feels cheap, which is fucking gold, because all Xbox controllers feel like this. I mean, this one even looks like it, and it feels basically identical. Yes, Xbox controllers feel cheap. Yes, this controller feels average to me because I use Xbox controllers, so I don't really think it feels that cheap. However, I will say the D-pad feels noticeably shit. It's like pressing the power button on a PC that came with Windows 7. It's not great. So people are always vocal with their negatives, and those were all the negative hardware-related issues that I was able to find that were noteworthy enough at least to put in this video. Like I said earlier, the only real software related issue that it has is that it doesn't have a uh, PC gyro support, kind of just said fuck off to that. But aside from like gyro and this controller being pretty square, I mean it's kind of dual sense now that I look at it, people really have not had much negative to say about this 8-bit dough controller period. Which makes it very easy to recommend, I mean uh, uh, no shit, of course it does, but that really isn't the whole story. When discussing reliability, a counter you will often hear people bring up is your controller is broken because you treated it like shit. If you treated it well, it would not have broken. This is not actually always the case. You see, the devices that you're defending are actually designed from the very moment they're born to die. They continue to use materials that they are aware degrade under very, very little stress. And then when something inevitably does break, they end up profiting off of your misfortune, but it's not like it's bad luck. It's more so actually a case of shitty engineering causing you to buy another one of the exact same product. These same companies have intentionally ignored for the past 20 years magnets because they are the solution to the stick drift problem and they won't be able to continue to sell you shitty, unreliable $50 to $70 stock controllers. And also the pro controllers, which are even more unreliable and they're two to three to four times more expensive. A prime example being the Elite Series 2, which is either just as, if not, more unreliable than a stock Xbox controller. And that $180 controller came with a three month warranty for the first year it was out and they only changed it because of a goddamn lawsuit. If there's one thing I'd like people to take away from this video, it's not just that the 8-Bit Do Ultimate is a great controller. That's obvious. One of the biggest reasons shitty products find success is because they find a way to get you emotionally attached to your fucking purchases so that even when those purchases and those companies are fucking you over, you'll defend them. Some companies like Apple are so unfathomably dominant over their customer base, they can literally convince them that design flaws in their devices are actually just you using the device incorrectly. Oh, the iPhone 4 antenna is defective in a bunch of fucking phones? Well, it's not that it's defective, you're just holding the phone wrong. Even I have succumbed to that exact same problem of defending these billionaires who don't actually give a shit about me. Look out for yourself. Don't defend these companies. Just because they make products you like doesn't mean they're good. And just because people are critical of some of the things that you may enjoy or companies that make products that you may like, it, it doesn't necessarily mean we're criticizing you guys. Just please, for not just the good of you, but for the good of all of us, keep an eye on yourself. Look out for the consumer. Do not fucking defend these billionaires. They don't give a shit about you. So with all that being said, please buy this. The Apito Ultimate without the Hall Effect thumbsticks, which by the way, there is a version of that, kind of, it's still worth 70 to 80 to 90 bucks without the Hall Effect thumbsticks. 
The controller alone is badass. Just like the King Kong Pro 2, very easy recommendation, without question. I'll make that deal. How about you, you bitch, you make that deal? I'd make that deal. I don't blame you. Damn good deal. The future of pro controllers should look something like this. I would enjoy at least more simple back button designs, even if it's just two, software integration that does something, and magnetic thumbsticks because they're just as cheap to produce and now there's no excuse because there's someone producing them and licensing them to you. The future of controllers may actually be going somewhere and it's been stagnant for a very, 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 very long time. So I will have a link down in the description below for this if you're curious and uh, getting a head start. While you're down there, be sure to uh, drop a comment on what you'd like to see reviewed on the channel. I am taking suggestions. It is the new year. I know I didn't make a, a new year's video like I do every year, so here it is. I was a fuck up last year and I apologize. Empty promises run throughout my family like they're goddamn genetics and I am going to do my best to stop it. And I actually am working on content. I'm working on getting a backlog going so you guys have videos two times a week, every week. The undefeated, undisputed controller review champion is back. I am undefeated. If, if anyone would like to fight for like a belt, I'll make like a belt with a controller on it and I, I'll beat the fuck out of somebody for that shit. We'll, we'll figure it out some other day. Anyways, I love you guys. I sincerely hope to see you in the next one, and I sincerely hope to see you guys in the upcoming DualSense Edge review. Peace out.